right, everybody, I am back. Uh, I'm going to do another smallish stream because I'm so taken with this game. I just, it's been on my mind since I stopped earlier. Um, we're going to continue. The game is called Between Horizons. I will drop a link to it in the chat for kicking it off. We are on a ship called the Zephyr going to a new home several light years away from Earth. There's something shady going on. Somebody sabotaging the ship and or communications between our group and Earth. Now, I was a little worried when I shut it off earlier because it said, oh, you can't, they're not going to have like normal save game play. But when I click on play, I get select save game. So I'm pretty sure we can just continue where we left off at. And um, well, hopefully we should be able to do that. But we're going to get right into it. Also, I have Stream Raiders Battles running, so if you would like to get in on that, you're able to. Okay, we need to talk to Deverin. Um... All right, so we need to show him the activities plaque. Is there a way I can get into the activities room right now? Oh, wait. Okay, so we already did this. All right. Um, Deverin's talk about following protocols. Uh, I'm happy to help. The code is the year of my birth, 2480. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so we actually did all of this. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's look at the... That's the note. Cycling center. Oh, I need to look at the paper for the kilograms. Okay, 940 grams of paper were left over after school ended for the week. And we had 495 paper for Art Institute and the activities room. So let's ask him about the paper, I think. And see if he can tell us how much he used. Oh, Chief, I don't know what to say about that, really. Let's ask your friend here. I have nothing to say about that. Okay, so I have no way of knowing how many... What their usage was, if they dumped any, how much they got. Like, we know from the school they got 1,200 grams. So I don't know if it's 1,200 grams across the board. Maybe. Um, I am not sure. All right, so we went into the activities room already. Um, let's see, the recruit. We gotta figure out who they're going to be recruiting. All right, prime suspects are Rose and Louise they're in the brig. Rose found the letter in the hidden compartment and Luis was apprehended nearby. Um, we can go back to the security office and see if we can talk to them about Louisa and Rose. Or Louisa. Louis and Rose. I keep doing that. My gosh. Captain's office. Security office. Go right there. Oh, we actually had a little cut scene on the tra on the um train this time. Okay, I'll take it. Stairs. 
cannot go in the biological area. Alright, so no, I don't want to go to room two. Okay, so where is the security office from here? Ask and you shall receive. Ava, Leona. Do you have any further information on the suspects in the brig? I assume the captain's told you everything. Did she mention the necklace? No, she did not. Technician Lewis was wearing a pendant that is not manufactured on the ship. Either someone made it or brought it from Earth. Here, have a look. We've confiscated and cataloged it. Well, I imagine they confiscated it when they put him in the jail cell, because why would you let somebody keep something in a jail cell? Because you never know what they're going to do with it. So we're just going to say good work. He was behaving suspiciously. Enforcer Bodo suspected it might be related to the case, so she asked him about it. But he wouldn't say where he got it from. You know him pretty well, Chief. Do you remember him wearing this? No, never saw it. He must have started wearing it at some point over the past few weeks. Maybe he'll tell you more about it. Alright. Um... All right, so I guess we have to go to, I guess we need to go speak to them in the brig. All right, I wanna to talk to you, son. You were wearing the necklace when you were apprehended. Where did you get it from? Why does it matter? It's my personal life. Please don't be that way. You know the context of our conversation and what it means. Fine. Y'all really want to know? Engineer Isaac made it for me. We've been seeing each other lately. Engineer Isaac? I see. That's why I was in the inner hall. He works down there and I was going to keep him company during his shift. Was he expecting you? Yeah. Then he will corroborate what you just told me. Is he still working? As far as I know. Alright, so we need to go back to the inner hull. Power node A. Let's see if I can find it. That's the bunks. Sky bar. Gym. Earth Museum, Server Room. We'll go there. We need to go down. Huh, we didn't have that before, the Earth Museum plaque. Place to learn about planetary life in the past and present so we can shape it and get it in the future. Currently closed due to preparations for rival day festivities, Caretaker Devon is responsible. Oh, we haven't been in the command area. I want to say it's down here. Okay, I 
cannot get into the power node. Server room, server room. Look at me go! Alright, hopefully he is still here. I think this is where I saw him. That's Isaac. Not the guy that I need. Do do, ba do do do, ba do do do. Donio. Server room, power node. Network access point. Pretty sure he's not in here. Um, I don't know where to go to find him. I made 50 cent tour. Have you seen Engineer Isaac? He's over the recycling center. Pass that door in the inner hall B, then straight until you see it on your left. Thank you. I went in there, I did not see him. All right, so we'll go in here. Take a look. Engineer Isaac, were you gonna meet Lewis here today? Uh, what kind of question is this? I don't mean to be indiscreet. It's strictly about a matter I'm investigating. I don't see why that would be important for your investigation, but no, we weren't meeting today. But it's true we've been seeing each other. Did he tell you that? Yes, he did. I see. Okay, so. I think it's Lewis. He lied about meeting him. He was down there when he shouldn't be. He's got his mother at home um, and is hiding her and told her not to leave. All right, points to Lewis. Yeah, we're gonna submit it. New message from Talia. Make sure you confront Lewis with the evidence he found before you come to me. Alrighty. Let's go back to the brig. Am I going the right way? Yes, I am. Never can tell with me, I always go the wrong way. Yes, we don't want to. I don't know what you mean. Um, talk to Isaac. First time he heard of your supposed date is this afternoon. He must have forgotten he's scatterbrained sometimes. 
Well, they didn't seem scatterbrained to me. Didn't you say you just started seeing each other? Sounds like he should be excited about it. Well, I guess he wasn't. Come on, Lewis, stop lying to me. You're not doing yourself any favors here. You know what? Fine. A few days ago, I found an anonymous letter in my bunk. Somebody must have slid it under my door while I was at work. They asked me if I was dissatisfied with the situation on the Zephyr. And if I wanted to have a bigger say in how things are going. They instructed me to lean my doorman against the door in an upright position that night. As a sign, I wanted to learn more. So, that's what I did. Seriously? It's treason, Lewis. What do you want about? I didn't breach the codex in any way. I wanted to know what these guys were up to, okay? The next letter showed up in my locker at work. I was instructed to write an answer on the back and leave it in a specific place. They described the precise location of the wall in the inner hall B. That's where I sent and received the subsequent letter. An enforcer Bodo caught you on the way there. Yes. So you lied to me. Well, what would you have done in my place? I'll need to take the detailed statement on this whole exchange, but right now time is running out. Do you have any idea who's sending these messages and what their goals are? No, they didn't say. My first in-person contact was going to take place tonight at the event. You mean the arrival day event at the Earth Museum that's about to start? Do you know who exactly you were supposed to talk to? Well, not precisely. One of the performers. They split up the instructions across two letters, probably as a precaution. Beside the letter you found, there was another hint in the previous one. It said, my contact works in a Category 2 profession. Listen, Stella, you know me. I was never going to do anything illegal. I was just curious. Yeah, but investiga investigating this kind of thing is not your job. You know you're supposed to report it to security. For all I know, you were trying to get on a dissident movement that could jeopardize the whole mission. Dissident movement? You have no idea what they're about, and neither do I. Well, then, why did you signal to them you were interested? You think it's so wrong what they're saying? You're part of the crew, but me? The general population barely has the right to know or decide anything. And I do? It's a mission, and we're all part of it. Well, who came up with the mission? A bunch of dipshits back on Earth that aren't even here? Some of them died years ago. I'm tired of carrying out someone else's plan. Well, the mission is not about your personal needs. It's about ensuring the survival of our species. Doesn't change the fact that we're the ones who should be making the rules. We spent our entire goddamn lives on this ship. I couldn't believe what he was saying. I'd known for a while that Lewis was unhappy about how certain things worked on the ship, but I'd never thought he would lose faith in the mission. I knew him better than almost anyone in the general population. If his views were this radical and I didn't notice, what about everybody else? Maybe the crew was losing touch. I knew we had to face this before it got worse. All right, so. We need to go see Captain Talia. I wonder if I do the, I mean, it, it puts us in a tram, but I wonder if we have a really cool, like, like a beam away, like Star Trek or something, you know, like beam me up, Scotty. Except you're beaming to the platform for the train and then magically you show up. I mean, how all were all Earth. Well, all Earth. Everybody should have. Everybody should have a way to fast travel. Okay, so I need to go up the stairs. We should be able to travel by map, like the Muppets and some of these other places. Now we go up. Do, 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 do. Going up, going up, all the way to the top floor. Where am I at? Okay, so I need to go this way. That's really cool. Although I imagine after all these years in space, it would be kind of, um, it would probably start wearing on you mentally, I would think. Elias. Uh, he's got nothing to say. So we will go talk to Talia. Chief, I saw you submitted your results. The origin of the paper will have to wait. You'll need... We, need to fir we first need to focus on the meeting at the arrival day event that was mentioned in the letter. The Earth Museum just opened its doors and the event is about to start. You suspect that letter was addressed to Lewis after all. Good work. We'll bug him and send him in once you give us the go-ahead. Now listen closely. There will be people around the museum dressed in their work attire as part of the event. 
one of them must be the contact mentioned in the letter. Go to the event, have another look at everything we found out, and tell us who. As soon as you submitted your conclusions, we'll send, in the, we'll send the suspect in to talk to them and get more information. Keep your distance from that point on. Sergeant Aldrich will be ta talking you through all of this, but don't let people see your earpiece. If you arouse suspicion or if our suspect talks to the wrong person, we might lose our chance to find out who's behind all of this. Understood, Captain. Good luck, Chief. Okay, so we need to go to the Earth Museum. All right, so we need to look for somebody that works in a Category 2 profession. These do not say what these occupations are, like artist, teacher, assistant biology. They're, they're not telling me what, if they're, you know, um, a two or a three or a one. There is absolutely no way of knowing that. All right, so we need to go to the Earth Day Museum. It's the Art Institute. Cafe, school, art institute. Activities, the Earth Museum. There it is. About five minutes left on Stream Raiders if you guys want to get in on it. Super simple. That's the art. We have to go the other way. Because I'm getting lost on a circular ship. No comments, please. <laughs> Alright, let's go into the Earth Museum. I wonder if I was supposed to go home and change. Uh, we're standing by next door, Chief. I hope you can hear me alright over the music. I feel like I should have changed my clothes. Um. We assume the contact is one of the people in work attire. They prepared some kind of presentation. Let's try to make our move before it starts. Go over all the information you gathered to find out which of the participants our subject is supposed to talk to. If you're not sure, talk to them and see what it, see if that narrows it down somehow. But don't blow your cover. If they suspect we're on to them, they might no longer respond to the code word. Well, I hate to say it. <clears throat> I'm in my security guard outfit. I think I already blew my cover by walking in here. Um, good luck, Chief. Once you submitted the file, we'll send the suspect in. You got this, Del. Okay, so. Basically, we need to find somebody with a tier two work. Infographic URSD. I kind of like the music. Excuse me while I bop along to this. Um, infographic URSD about how it's basically about how today's different professions will contribute once the Zephyr reaches URSD. Category 1 jobs like historians and artists contribute intangibly to social cohesion on the Zephyr and URSD, as they have since ancient times on Earth. Category 2 jobs, including engineers program and programmers, revolve around software and hardware use with some machines in the Zephyr's inner hull still waiting to prove their usefulness on the planetary surface. Category 3 jobs, such as doctors and reproductionists, are essential everywhere, but their focus will shift once planet side. Okay, so, category jobs, category 2 jobs, we're looking for engineers and programmers. Okay, so let's look and see who is our engineers and our programmers. Teacher, artist. Okay, so Isaac is a recycling engineer. Antonio is a actual just a flat out engineer. Let's 
Xena doesn't have anything. Well, Xena is an engineer retired. So we can't we can't rule her out. Like her whole cover could be scatterbrained when she's not scatterbrained. Okay, so we got a caretaker, we got a caretaker, a farmer, janitor, engineer, Lewis, but he's locked up in the brig. We got the captain. We've got Elias. We got Aaron, who's the programmer. He was the one that was knocked out, though. So could he have been knocked out to not blow his cover? Sure. Resident historian is Michio. And assistant sergeant is Paul. Okay, so. We need to go see about... Oh, OCN. Stella, it's a nice surprise. I didn't expect to see you here. You know, I thought it sounded interesting. Well, that means a lot coming from an introvert like you. The event is about to start. It's all about how jobs in the Zephyr will be useful on your ASD and how some will transform. Our presenters are dressed in their work attire already. Feel free to ask them anything you want. We also prepared this infographic right there with more information. Aldrich, we don't have time for this, Chief. Try to cut it short. I will. Check it out, I mean. Well, I hope you have a good time. Happy Arrival Day. Happy Arrival Day. Okay, Camille's a doctor. Aaron, we need to talk to him. Programmer Aaron, you're part of the event as well. Yeah, I volunteered to talk about programming challenges that will face us once we approach, you know, the real Arrival Day. Well, not us, us. More like my future kid's future kid. But it's important that I have an understanding of it today. Well, won't technology change a fair bit over the next hundred years? That is a valid point. It does all the time, but I keep up with Earth's yearly updates. Just recently, they started working my way through some literature they sent us with this year's arrival day package. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the, pop the stream readers on while we're doing this. I see, it's nice that you're so passionate about it. Okay, so I don't, I honestly don't think it's Aaron, but I could be wrong. Deverin, dear visitors, thank you so much for coming to the Earth Museum on a very special arrival day. We've invited important people from across the population to share insights into their jobs and the role they play in the mission. I hope you will fill, in, you will fill it with the same pride and determination that my daughter felt when putting it together. The presentation will begin shortly. In the meantime, feel free to chat and mingle with each other and our exciting volunteers. Okay. Uh, she's a doctor, so we'll just see what happens if we talk to the doctor. Chief, come to hear about the medical challenges that await us on the new planet. You wouldn't believe the, un the number of unexpected things that could wipe us out once we make contact with an entirely new ecosystem. We've never had an opportunity to build up an immunity to any of it. And conversely, we may just bring the next black death to your SD's animal and plant population. That is true, because if you think about it with the settlers, or with the people that came over from other um, other countries, they would bring things like smallpox and all these other things and it would wipe out indigenous people and animals and stuff like that. So, I mean, it, it really literally works both ways, but they did say that Uriusd is supposed to closely relate to Earth. So, it'll be interesting to see. I hope they have all, all kinds of PPE gear and respirators and stuff. You know, she probably shouldn't really be talking to people about it because people will be like, what? Who is this? Camille. We'll talk to Camille. All right. Yay, we did it. We are going to move on to uh, unknown challenge level because why not? And do, 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 do. I'm going to drop a healer this time just because I need to drop healers. All right. Evening, Chief. Sorry, I need to practice my speech right now. I'm very nervous. As a biologist, I not only, I not only do take care of, I do not only take care of, I do not only take care of, that's it. All right, he's confusing my brain. 
We're not going to talk to him again. Confusing my brain. Let's talk to Baptiste. Good evening, Historian Baptiste. Chief, I hope you're going to enjoy this little presentation we put together for tonight. I'll briefly talk about us historians and our role in documenting the first steps our species will ever take on an exoplanet. It's only a century away, which is basically tomorrow in the grand scheme of things. Let me read a little excerpt from my script. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. I'll hear it all in a minute. Devrin has nothing to say. Which one is Devrin? That's Darren. Okay, Devrin is a caretaker. All right. Um, who's Geraldo? I don't remember seeing a name Geraldo. There's an Umberto. Hmm. All right, we'll talk to him and see what he's got to say. Engineer. Gar Ender, Engineer Geraldo. <clears throat> now that's an outfit. <clears throat> there goes my voice. That's an outfit I've never seen before. Well, that's no surprise. I don't often have an opportunity to put it on. Looks like he's got a little cat, um, like a little cat medallion in the middle of it. He's wearing knee pads. Not sure what that means, but it's designed for the vacuum of space. I most often put it on in the outer hall, but I've engaged in some rare EVA as well. Due to my special training, I'm often referred to as an astronaut here on the ship, but to everybody back on Earth, we're technically astronauts here. Okay. Uh, Ageton? I don't even how. Why do they give me weird names I don't know how to pronounce? Fancy seeing you, you here, Chief. Came to learn something about our future jobs? Well, human reproduction sounds interesting. We aren't very involved in the fun part, I'm sorry to say. But if you have questions about concocting fetuses from two genetic donors and raising them in an artificial womb, being in space makes it a little harder, but not all that much as long as we have an artificial gravity. Okay. So, he goes out... He's trained to work in zero-G environments, so he's an astronaut. He's not who we're looking for. I feel like we kind of have to pick out who is here. So we don't want to blow our cover. Um... Well, I don't know. I suppose. I suppose we can reshow everybody the paper. Okay, so he doesn't know what to say about that. He's got nothing to say about it. She's a doctor. He doesn't know what to say about it. Um, that's the door I mentioned. It was broken when I came back from dinner. Whoever was here clearly doesn't usually have access to the network area. Should have called security right when I saw it instead of going back inside. Hmm. I honestly don't know. Unless we outright accuse somebody. And the activities room is not there. Okay, so it's supposed to be in a tier two or a job, a second tier on the jobs. 
right, that we're looking for, um, which would be engineers and programmers. However, the only one wearing something that is standing out and unique is the astronaut. Um... Engineers, programmers, it doesn't say what astronaut would be. Let's, uh... Contact at the event works in a category two profession. Hmm. Pennant looks like half a heart. Necklaces like this were not officially manufactured on the Zephyr. It must be handmade. Lewis was wearing it when he apprehended. Was apprehended in the inner hall B. Um, Engineer Isaac. And Isaac is not here. So why is Isaac not at the place? He's got nothing to say about that. Um, all right, I don't know who to narrow it down for. I mean, honestly. He is the only one standing out, but it doesn't necessarily say Astronauts are tier two jobs. Oh, I don't know. Doctors, reproductionists are essential. Um, I would think he would be in a category three job. Because right now it's essential everywhere, but he's going to have to shift to something else once he gets to the ground. Let's look at his... Most often put it on in the outer hall, but I've engaged in some rare EVA as well. Due to my special training, I'm often referred to as an astronaut. Hmm. I don't think it's Aaron. He honestly could have had somebody clock him like he met with somebody and then just here clock me so if they find out, you know, it'll kind of, he'll be able to hide what's going on. Um... So we should be making rules. We spend our entire lives on the ship. Uh, okay, so... something um maybe we should have shown something to tonio But he's not here. It's only certain people that are here. Symbol on the inside of the compartment where the suspicious letter was found. I wish they would show us this symbol. Um, find out the... And it, I don't fucking know. You guys have any idea? Nice presentation. Features members of the population. Dressed in their work attire for some sort of presentation. The contact must be one of them. Go over the information I have so far and talk to participants to find out more if necessary. I'm kind of leaning towards Geraldo. I could be wrong. 
Looks like you've identified a possible contact. We'll send our suspect in to strike up a conversation. Step away to give them some privacy, but I, for, uh, you're cutting out, Sergeant. Uh, everybody stay calm. I'm sure it's just the earthquake. <gasps> Bad to worse, right the first act. Okay. So something really bad happened. Um, what? Where am I? Chief, good to have you back. How do you feel? Dr. Destin Destina, my head hurts. What happened? Well, the ring had a malfunction and you were flung into the wall like almost everyone. But you were lucky. No concussions or anything. What are you saying? Is the ship all right? Well, I'm not sure. We're still waiting for an official statement from the captain. It was like the power suddenly went out and the whole ship rebooted. That's really weird. What about the situation? How serious are people's injuries? We can barely keep up to be honest. Many people were hurt, some in critical condition, and not everyone made it. <gasps> no, who didn't make it? Mina, Federico, Nadia, and Elias so far. Secretary Elias? I'm so sorry, we did what we could. Some people are still in critical condition and a few are missing. Well, how long was I out? Um, they brought you in about eight hours ago? Fuck. I gotta go to the bridge and talk to the captain. From a medical perspective, it would make sense if you... Well, I don't have time to rest. I need to find out what happened. As soon as I was back on my feet, I checked my PDA and found a message from the captain. She wanted me to come see her on the bridge. I decided to take the long way around the ring and assess the damage on my way. Reproductive ward? And I'm not controlling this, so I'm just yeeting the fuck out of there objects were scattered everywhere some walls were covered in fresh dents and splattered liquids a large chunk of the population had been injured once or twice i believed to catch someone glancing at me i was ashamed that i hadn't been around to help everyone right after the incident i wanted to say something to the people but instead i lowered my head and picked up the pace my sense of balance was off i tripped and almost fell multiple times finally i made it to the bridge and to my relief, I immediately spotted my sergeants and the captain in relatively good shape. Okay, well that's good. Chief, Captain Talia, sergeants, what happened? We're still evaluating the situation. Something caused a power outage across the entire ship. This caused the ring to slow down and stop temporarily. It spun back up within less than a minute, but re the resulting force was massive. It left many injured and some dead. However, the ship itself does not seem to have sustained any critical damage. There are some issues, however. For one, the navigation system isn't back online yet. The navigators are working on it. A major waterline was damaged, flooding in the inner hull section C and D. We've sealed them off until the engineers report back. We don't know what caused power outage. We need answers fast so I can address the population. I'm counting on you to find them, Chief. With all due respect, Captain, this sounds like a rather technical question. Well, the engineers are working out the technical side of things. However, we cannot rule out foul play. Do you really think someone would? Well, that's what I want you to find out. Sergeant Paul, you already collected some relevant information? Yes, Captain. There are four power nodes on the ship, one in each section of the inner hull. Chief, you've been granted clearance to enter these rooms. However, as the captain mentioned, inner hall C and D are currently inaccessible. The shipwide <clears throat> outage was actually a chain reaction originating at one of the four nodes. If we can find out which power node was the first to go out, we are a lot closer to identifying the cause of the outage. Got it. One more thing. According to our ship logs, a shipwide alarm went off after the first two nodes failed. Well, maybe this can re help us reconstruct the timeline. So what you're saying is two nodes went out, then the alarm started, and lastly, the other two nodes failed. Correct, but none of them went out at the exact time. It all happened in quick succession. And that's all we know so far. About our sting operation, that was cut short before the incident. There is no doubt that Engineer Lewis was exchanging these suspicious letters. He was interrogated again by forces while you were incapacitated. It seems like he truly doesn't know anything relevant yet, as his first in-person contact was yet to take place. We placed him back in the break for the time being. And about the contact at the event, it seems you were right about Engineer Geraldo. 
He disappeared in the turmoil and hasn't resurfaced yet. Maybe he decided to go into hiding after seeing our presence at the Earth Museum? The enforcers are out looking for him. If there's nothing else, you should get to work. There is something, Captain. I'm so sorry about Secretary Elias. He was a good man. Thank you. He was dismissed. Okay, so we've had an update in the cases. Uh, let's see. We need to go to the and in, in, inspect the power nodes. Um, alarm on the ship went off after the first two nodes went out. So somebody suppressed the alarm. And then a, probably a redundant one kicked in after the second second power node was tripped. Um, so. so we need to go and look at, we need to go and look at power node. What is that power node B? C and D are inaccessible at the moment. So we need to start with B. Um, Power node D, power node C is currently flooded. Reproduction ward. Okay, we've got all of these. I'm outside my bunk right now. Please come see me if you can. Okay, so we can go see Ava. So please come to me. contact me as soon as you're awake. You were covered in blood and unresponsive. When we found you at the Earth Museum, Dr. Yaha assured me you'll be fine, but I'm really worried. Needless to say, our sting operation was unsuccessful. Okay, so Paul is right here. We'll talk to Paul. Really? He said to come talk to him, but I guess he doesn't want to talk now. Alright, um... We'll start off with power node A. And that is, that's up. All right, so we need to take the elevator down. That's the brig. I want to go in here real quick and just talk to him again. Stella, what the hell is going on? Lewis? Why did you throw me back in here? Lewis, I had nothing to do with that decision. I got knocked out cold. I know, I was there. I'm glad you're back up on your feet, but I want to see what's going on out there. I want to help. You're the first person to come in here today. Can you please let me out? Well, I won't go against my sergeants on this. I know you're cooperating, but this whole ordeal is far from resolved. Fine. Can I at least give him rations? I'm starving. Of course. I'm sorry they're keeping you waiting. There's a lot going on. I'm putting a notice out right away. Have you heard from Xena? Ah, oh, they told me she was okay. Good. Lewis, I need you to stay put here. We're working things out as fast as possible. If you know anything that could speed up our investigation, now's the time to tell me. Well, I told you everything. All right, and it looks like Rose got out. Take the elevator going down. Level negative one, please. Network access point. See if Aaron is here. Programmer Aaron, everything alright down here? The network area sustained minimum damage from the outage, so that's good. But our colleagues in the power nodes were both brought to the hospital. I couldn't reach either of them. Seems like they don't have access to their PDAs. Well, I hope they recover very soon, and I'm sure they will. Everybody seems to be really tight down here. Well, we've all pulled each other out of various dangerous places by the legs at, at some point. I see it tends to bond people. 
All right, so. D is busted, so we've got to go all the way over to A because I went the wrong way. All right, power node A. Oh, it's a mess down here. Paranode A log. It's a large rod at the center of the power node room in the inner hall A. Notes, the machine seems to be back up and running. There's a display on its side providing a readout of power node A's latest log. I filed it separately. The power node log um, leading up to the outage, the log says all power nodes running, status okay. Malfunction detected, one power node off grid, two power nodes off grid, alarm started, then three status critical shutting down. Okay. Doesn't necessarily mean that it was this one that went bad first. Okay. It's the server room, server room. Let's go into power node B. Maintenance room is offline. Public area. Cycling center and there is C. Why is there a bubble above that? Oh hey, did you say something? It's so loud in here. The recyclers are chewing through a lot of debris and broken stuff right now. No, I didn't say anything. What? Sorry, you gotta speed up up if you need anything. Hope you don't mind that I keep trying to stop this thing from overheating. Let's go into power node B and see what this one says. Power node B, name display. Rod B, new evidence. Tijon, new evidence. Case updated sabotage, broken PDA. Looks like someone was hurt in power node B. Um, Tijon is the engineer responsible for power node B. Power rod B. Uh, I have no idea if it currently does anything as its screens are busted. However, I found a small display listing the person in charge that I filed separately. A lone broken PDA smeared with blood on the floor. Somebody seems to have lost it in the power node room at the inner hall. Looks like it's banged up and there are traces of blood on it. Power node B named display. It seems to be one of the manned power nodes. The display on the machine says responsible engineer Tijon. Okay, so... Who knows where this Tijon is? Okay, so we need to find Tijon. That's what we need to do. All right, so I'm pretty sure he probably went to medical. Uh, let's see, what is this? Locker room. Reproduction ward. We're just going to travel there and then I know I can get back to the medical from there. The residential area.
Let's go into the reproduction board. I know it has nothing to do with it, but we're just going to look while we're here. Infographic baby that. Whereas most people on Earth are carried to term by their biological mother, natural pregnancies are avoided on the Zephyr in favor of breeding vats. Every parent to be may freely choose the genetic material of their offspring from a vast database of preserved genetic material from Earth. They may also use DNA of their own and or with their consent and that of another person on the ship. Okay. Agent, I barely dare ask, but did the vats sustain damage? We had a close call in here, Chief. A couple of them, actually. As you can see, a few vats were toppled over and cracked. The fetuses weren't injured by the initial fall, but they can't sustain. They can't survive for long in an empty vat. Luckily, I made it back here within minutes of the incident. Nutrition solution was already spreading all over the floor, and I sprung into action. It seems like I was able to transfer all fetuses to intact vats in time. They're all in stable condition. I just hope they didn't get contaminated with anything dangerous in the process. You're a hero. Do you know that? I'm just doing my part. We create all these fetuses. That makes it our job to protect them with all we got. If we expect them to serve the mission one day, we need to serve them now. Very true. All right, let's go back out into the biological area. Leona, please, Destina. I'm sorry, I can't. Our resources are stretched too thin already. We can't help you with your pet when human lives are on the line. He's not just a pet to me, he's family. Stella, you have to back me up. I need medicine for Kimmy. The Codex clearly states that our medicine is only meant for humans in the first place. Be grateful for the exceptions we've made in the past. We cannot afford to make another one today. Destina, you should... I'm going to go with give her the medicine. I'm an animal lover, and honestly, I'd be like, if you had stuff put aside for me, just give it to my animal before you would treat me. So we're going to please give her the medicine. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, she's pissed. Fine, but you're bearing the consequences if we run out, Chief. Go pick them up at the front desk, Leona. I have to get back to work. Okay. Thank you so much. Excuse me. Can I ask you something? Why, yes, of course. Are you the chief? Um, yes, I am. And you're Elliot, right? Eric's son? That's so cool, you're chief. I want to be chief someday. Well, can I? Who knows, or you will be an engineer. So I'm assuming they follow in, their, in the steps of the parents. If you're born into a family that's engineer, that's what you do. Like, my dad was the chief of security, so now I'm security um i feel like they kind of they kind of go that way um but we like to encourage that you could be anything you want to be a doctor an astronaut a pilot that kind of stuff so we'll go with who knows you never know what the future brings and it's true because a lot can change between now and 100 years maybe you'll get your chance to become chief someday well what are you doing here anyway elliot did you get hurt well, because of the thing when the lights went out? No, I only have some scratches. I need to see Dr. Yaha because of my condition. Your condition? She gives me medicine every other day or else I can't breathe right. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. She always tells me a new story so it doesn't get boring. On that note, she's waiting for you in the examination room. Okay, bye, Chief. Oh, Destin is mad. Poor boy. What's his diagnosis exactly, if I may ask? It's a complex problem that we didn't really have on Earth. He would probably be completely fine in a planetary atmosphere. It's a genetic disease we dubbed interstellar dystrophy. A handful of people on the ship are affected. Well, is there nothing we can do? I'm afraid not. We tried everything we could think of. We were hoping for some breakthrough research from Earth in this year's arrival day transmission, but we were disappointed. Ah, oh, that really sucks. Hey, look, we found Tijan. 
So... Let's talk to him. Engineer Tijin. Oh, Chief. How do you feel? Well, I had better days for sure. I was at work when the ring slammed me into the wall and it blacked out. Did it really come to a full stop? I'll get back down to the power node as soon as I can run some diagnostics. Well, do you have any idea what happened? That's what we're trying to find out. You haven't heard anything about Arjun, have you? No, what do you mean? I think I saw them wheel him into one of the rooms over there earlier. I th he seemed really hurt, but I'm not completely sure. I was still a little out of it. I'll see if I can find him. One more thing. I believe that some power nodes in the inner hall are manned and some are unmanned. Correct. I'm working B and D is Arjun's. A and C are unmanned. Does it make any difference I should be aware of? Only that un unmanned nodes provide a readout of recent activity. Arjun and I can tell you what went down in the other two. Ah, okay. Gonna start a new map on... We're gonna start a new map in Stream Raiders. Just getting everything set up for it. All right, um, put my paladin down, I think, this time. All right, we are ready. All right, according to Tijon Engineer Aaron, Arjun is somewhere in the hospital and he's in a bad state. So A and C are unmanned and they feature logs. Okay, so. Unless it was Tijon or Arjun, A and C are probably where we're going to find the issues. Um, A, we pulled the report from. C is underwater, so we're going to have to wait. All right, let's see if we can find him. Examination room, consultation room. Go exam room first. Oh, it's Elliot. And Yaha, okay. Oh wait, was her? Go in here. Is there nobody in here? Intensive care, and we're not able to get into intensive care. So I really think we need to go back to see the doctor real quick. You have nothing to say about that right now. Sorry, Chief, I can't help you with your investigation. Can't help with the investigation. Excuse me, is Engineer Erjun somewhere in the hospital right now? I need to talk to him about a case. Yes, but he's in the intensive care room. Can't this wait? He's in stable condition, but he, sh he should rest. I'm afraid it's urgent. Fine, but keep it short. I'm unlocking the room for you. I will. Thank you. Okay. Go to critical care. Mm 
Well, hello there. Is that you, Doc? No, it's Chief Stella. Chief, sorry, I can't see all that well right now. That's all right. I hope your eye is back to normal soon. So do I. The Doc is not so sure. Who is that person? Excuse my ignorance, but what exactly are the power nodes anyway? Basically, they distribute electricity throughout the ship, each responsible for its own segment of the ring. There are four rooms we call power nodes, even though technically a node is the equipment inside one such room. Its main component being the rod in the center. They're located in the inner hull, but I heard nodes C and D are currently inaccessible due to flooding. B and D are manually maintained and monitored by the engineers, whereas nodes A and C are unmanned. Okay, um... He's got nothing to say about the PDA. Trying to trace where the power outage originated. There are large rods with screens on them and down in the power node rooms. Can you tell me anything about them that would help with my case? Sounds like you already found the display node A that logs all the activity. If you want to know what went down in B, you have to ask Tijon. All I know is the alarm started blaring. Then the lights turned off and I was flung into a wall. I woke up all wet with a searing pain in my eye. First I thought I was bleeding like crazy, but most of it was actually water from a burst pipe. By that point, gravity was back, the emergency lights were on, and the doors worked again. To be honest, I didn't have another look at the screen before I left to seek medical attention. Well, did you notice any notifications prior to your node turning off? I must have missed them because the alarm didn't doesn't start for nothing. I assume at least two nodes failed before mine. Okay, so. He works at B. Two nodes went out before his. Could it be A and C? Maybe? But A seemed, according to the note, A seemed to be working good. Uh, let's go back and talk to Arjun real quick. Where are you at? About the large rods in the middle of the power node rooms. They receive and distribute the power to respective parts of the ship. The two unmanned ones provide a log of the recent activity. If the screen on a rod is black, does it mean the node is inactive or broken? Not necessarily. They're frequently turned off and may break or get disconnected independently. Right now, the rods in all four nodes are certainly back up and running. But how do you know? Because no parts of the ship are currently unpowered from what I've heard. It was pitch black in the room as soon as my node failed. A warning popped up on the screen and suddenly it went out entirely. Well, did you catch what it said? It reported a node failure or maybe multiple. In other words, one or more nodes failed before yours? Correct. Do you know anything else about the order of events during the powder out power outage? I'm afraid not, Chief. Let's see if he knows the PDA or it was from the looks of it his PDA must have gotten smashed when I hit the wall I'll get back to the power node as soon as possible and see if it still works okay so it looks like B and D were covered the power node he was working it was not the first to go out all right, and Arjun says that the alarm started before his power node went out. Okay, so it's... So B and D seem to be the last two after the alarm. So A and C are the ones that have an issue. We cannot get into C, though. That's the only thing. Um... Power node A log. Log sets all power nodes running status okay. Malfunction detected. One power node off the grid. Two power nodes off grid. Alarm started. Three power nodes. Okay, so I think if that can't be correct. It would have to be one of the two um, manned ones that went down. So a malfunction was detected. So perhaps that was C. And then it noted one power off, two power off the alarm. 
then three, and then... F okay, so A was the last one to go down. Okay, so A was the last one to go down. Uh, we need... Reported a node failure or maybe multiples. Okay, so Tijon is power node B. Okay, so he's got... His might have been third. So that means... Arms started blaring, then the lights turned off and I was flung into a wall. I woke up with staring pain in my eye. Okay, actually though, if he... Why was he hurt more so than Tijon? You know what I mean? Like, I, I can't see... They should both be... If they both... If theirs both went out last and they were flung into the wall, then shouldn't Arjun also be... Shouldn't Arjun also be, um, like, in critical condition, I would think? <laughs> so it wasn't A. A was the last one to go down because it had the log on the other three, the other three issues. So A was definitely last. I honestly, I'm thinking. Arjun's saying he assumes two, two nodes failed before his, but he was, he was like seriously injured. I don't know. I honestly think... I think Tijon was part of it. So his was first or second. We really need to get into C and D. Um... Let's go back down there. I wonder if there's a way to pump the water out.
Okay, it would kind of make sense if you're doing something shady, perhaps a message came through in your PDA and you broke it so it couldn't be found. Let's go in here real quick. Why can't we get into the maintenance room? Um, go back in here. Okay. So D and A, so it's got to be C and B. are flooded. to Sergeant Paul. Let's hope it helps. Go to your bunk and get some rest. My bunk, Captain. There's nothing else you can do at the moment. It's important that you be back at full health as soon as possible. We will evaluate your results now. I'll call you immediately if anything important importance happens in the meantime. Understood, Captain. Okay, so we need to go to our bunk. wonder if it's going to put us right in our bunk. place got wrecked. Camille, Darren, don't touch that. You said we're picking everything up from the floor. Not to cut cables, you get yourself electrocuted. Can I help you, Chief? Um, actually, you can help me. Darren, the Chief said she's going to lock you away if you touch that again. Nuh-uh. I, uh, she did. Some help we are. We should go back to the lab soon. On the other hand, Darren hasn't been this excited about a task in a while. Okay. So where is my... Is 
they need to go to my bunk. Okay, so I can go the other way and go up the stairs and then up the stairs again. All right, got it. Up the stairs, up the stairs again. Security office. Locker room? Yeah, yeah. Chief Stella, what can I do for you? Just checking in. How are the enforcers doing? Some equipment got damaged, but injuries tend to be minor thanks to our armor. The lockers and supplies are quite the mess, as you can see. I'm about to clean them up. Are the weapons and armor all functional? Well, I can't say for sure until I go through all of it, but they seem largely unscathed, just in disarray. Good. Thank you for your report. I could have sworn. Okay, so I need to run this way then. Just keep running. Stella, what the? Stella, um. All right, so why is she all up in my bunk? I can either draw a gun on her or I could be like, what are you doing here? I think drawing a gun is a little harsh. We're just gonna ask, what are you doing in my bunk? I'm sorry, I think this is a big misunderstanding. My place got completely wrecked when the thing happened. I was told this bunk was empty and I could stay here until everything was sorted out, so I was granted access. Oh yeah, I see. I was supposed to move into the chief's bunk weeks ago. I guess that's why they thought this one was free. Sorry for jumping you like this, I'm paranoid due to recent events. It's okay, everything is fine. I'm sorry for the confusion. I'll tell Richard I need another bunk. No wait, you can stay in my dad's bunk, it's right above mine. Well that's nice of you, thanks. I'll request access. Of course. So how are you holding up, Stella? About as well as you think. Everything's a shit show and I feel responsible for fixing it. And you? Well, I'm fine. Listen, you don't need to bear all the responsibility alone. I think there's better ways we could... Wait a minute, where's Chi-Chi? Chi-Chi, I didn't see her. Oh no! She wasn't in here when I arrived, I swear. I think the door wasn't properly closed. Maybe it came loose during the incident? She must have run away again. I hope she's okay. Help me keep an eye out, will you? Sure. I, can I just catch a break for us? Sorry, I'm getting a call. Oh, I get out of your hair. Sorry for the intrusion. I'll be upstairs if you want to talk, okay? Thank you, Ava. Captain? Chief, I'm afraid there's no time to rest after all. Come see me at the conference room on the bridge as soon as you can. Well, did you find out what caused the outage? Let's talk in person. That cannot be good. Oh, I just got fucking yeeted up there. Captain Tally, I came as fast as I could. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Why are we meeting here? I need to talk to you alone. The sergeants evaluated your assessment of the power outage. We couldn't confirm your findings about the origin of the power outage. I'm sorry, Captain. But our navigators finally got their systems back up and they made a very unnerving discovery. The ship's engine has been turned on. What? The ship was not equipped to perform a maneuver without any preparation. The engine hasn't been used in over 30 years. Perform a maneuver? We have changed course. <gasps> the engines are still running. We're slowly accelerating and changing our trajectory. But why? Why aren't we changing it? Because the navigators are locked out of their own system. At first, they were completely unable to even boot it up. Now they can see what's happening, but they can't do anything. What kind of glitch? It's not a glitch. The system's been hacked. 
The program maneuver will end tomorrow. Once it's complete, we'll be headed toward a different star. A different star? Why? What's there? Nothing. But it's a lot closer. We could be entering its gravitational pull in about three years. Hmm. Can we course correct back to EURUSD tomorrow after the maneuver is finished? We don't know yet if the system will let us back in. But even if it does, it'll be too late. We will need almost all the fuel we still have to decelerate. If we allow the ongoing maneuver to finish, we won't have enough fuel to course correct and to break. We would be able to just do one. We either arrive at the wrong star or we overshoot the right one. Chief, I need you to understand what this means. The maneuver was only possible in a very small window of time. It's a premeditated sabotage of the mission that may have been planned for years. Whoever did this not only has intimate knowledge of our systems, but they were also able to calculate and perform a complex maneuver. Well, do you think they knew it would cause this disastrous power outage? Maybe not. That part did not need to happen for their plan to succeed. It seems more like an accidental byproduct. There is a complex series of steps we usually have to take to prepare, to prepare an engine start. The hacker either didn't know about that or they weren't able to pull it off for a lack of time, skill, accomplices. Whatever the reason, we believe they were hoping the maneuver would stay undetected as long as possible. The engine is sent to a very gentle burn. The change in gravity is almost unnoticeable. But there are signs of, signs of our sideways momentum that people will notice eventually. Slanted water in a tank, a ball rolling down the hall, people tripping over their feet. Ah, oh, I thought my balance was off because of head trauma. Listen, Chief, this will be the most important assignment of your career. Our navigators are trying everything to regain control over the engine, but they would not give me any assurances. The hacker is the only person who knows how to undo this. You need to find them and make them talk before it's too late. If we do not course correct by the same time tomorrow, our mission fails. Do we have any leads whatsoever? Well, the hack might have been perpetrated by the dissidents we were already investigating. The timing cannot be coincidental. Talk to your sergeants at the security office to follow up on this. But we do have another lead. The perpetrator must have been at the navigation room to go through with the attack. In fact, they must have been out there or they must have been there in the minute right before the power went out. There are no signs forced entry, so our prime suspects are the people who have access to the room. This includes navigators Noella, Orland, and Joseph. At least some of them should be there right now. Engineers Eric and Asher also have access, but I don't know their status or whereabouts since the incidents. I've granted you access to the navigation room, have a look around, and talk to the navigators. They know I'm briefing you right now and are instructed to help, but don't forget we can't rule them out as suspects. Outside of them and your sergeants, you are to keep the contents of this entire meeting to yourself. Understood? Understood. That will be all. Let me know immediately when you make any progress. I will. As I exited the conference room, a thousand questions started forming in my head. If the hacker's sole intention had been to divert the ship, why did they specifically set course to the Otis system? Were they planning to orbit the star for the rest of time? I immediately felt that Talia wasn't telling me the whole truth, but I knew that prying would have been pointless. She had a habit of tightly controlling the flow of information, and in most instances, it was probably wise and well-intentioned. I would get my answers soon enough, anyway. <gasps> Chi-Chi! There you are! Come here, girl! What's the matter? <gasps> Where are you going, Chi Chi? No! Oh, great. She must be really scared. I'll run into her again. It's probably going to take a few attempts to call her, calm her down. Chi Chi! Come here, Chi Chi! Chi Chi! Did you go into the command area? Chi Chi, where are you? Okay, so we need to talk to the sergeants, look around the navigation area, and talk to everyone that has access. Um, security office is one floor down. Uh, 
All right. Um. We'll go talk to the security guys first. Chi Chi, why do you run away from me? Come here, I'll bring you back home. Chi Chi, wait! No! Oh, damn it! Next time I won't get you, kitty. Chi Chi, come here, Chi Chi! Chi Chi! Not what I want. I want my security office. Um. I guess I'll go up a floor. It's the locker room, security office. Sergeants, we need to discuss our next steps. Time is running out. So far, we haven't had any leads from our investigation into the origin of the suspicious letter. Geraldo is still at large, like he vanished into thin air when the lights went out. Next, we should probably focus our... Um, did we all get a message at the same time? The crew no longer has the situation under control. None of us voted for this leadership. What the hell is this? Uh, do you think everybody just received this? At least it reads like it was intended that way. How is it possible? It says the sender is anonymous. I've never seen this in my life. Nor have I. I'm calling programmer Aaron. It shouldn't be possible on a technical level. All messages in our network have a sender. Uh, yes, Sergeant Aldrich? Programmer Aaron, did you receive an anonymous message? I, uh, yeah. Can you trace it? It, sends the sen it says the sender is anonymous. I'm at the PDA terminal now. Give me a moment, please. It's strange. It looks like it was sent from outside the network. As in, not from the Zephyr? No, no, no. It's from somewhere on the ship, but the server has no ID. Well, what does that mean? It's almost like someone set up their own server to send the message to the whole network. Where? How? I'm sorry, Chief. It's too early to tell. Farad and I will try to work it out as quickly as possible. Good. I'll come see you down in the network area shortly. Talk to you then, Chief. If he's right, we have to find that server. Maybe I shouldn't ask around about it too openly. I'll go to the network area and see if they have any Time leads. Everybody received the ominous message. I wasn't yet aware of the broad support it would quickly garner in the general population. A crowd started forming in the residential area. Tensions would soon grow to the point that the captain decided to issue a partial lockdown of the ship. I don't think it helped the situation. Hey, Stell? Yes, Paul. I know you put a lot of pressure on yourself, usually more than you should. Well, it is a high pressure situation. You know what I'm talking about. You're trying to live up to expectations that maybe nobody else has of you. Talia is always very clear about her high expectations. Well, Talia has impossible expectations of everyone. It's not healthy. I'm just trying to say, William would be proud of you no matter what. Thank you. That made me feel good. All right. Okay, so we need to go... We talked to the sergeants. I guess we'll go to the navigation room and then... Alright, we're just going to go to the security room, I think. Case closed on that. Case closed, case closed. School. All right, so we need to go to the navigation room. All right, if you give me a minute, I will be back. I need to go grab a drink. You guys do the same, and we will play for a little bit longer.
All right, I am back. Whew, okay, so we are going to go to the navigation room. I would like to find Chi Chi. Well, I guess I gotta go back to the elevator and then go back up. Anyone in there? Stella? Yes, can I come in? Sure. Ava, sorry for the mess. I haven't had much time to clean up yet. Plus, I feel a little weird going through your dad's stuff. It's okay, don't worry about it. Let me know if you want to switch bunks. I'm up for it anytime. Thank you, I think I'll stay downstairs a little longer. I needed to run the other way. Keep running. Running, 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 running. Run some more. Keep going. All right, let's go into the navigation area. Painkillers, huh? A pack of painkillers lying under the table. They're prescribed to teacher Simon. How did they get here? Well, technically, Simon should not be here, so. Let's see what they have to say. Navigator Joseph, how are things going? Chief, I'm sorry about the whole mess. We're still locked out of our system. Somebody must have done this on purpose. We'll continue to trying to gain, regain control, but it's proving very complicated. Good luck. Please contact the sergeants immediately if you make progress. I will, Chief. Do you have any idea what went down in here leading up to the incident? I'm sorry. I hadn't been here for hours prior to the attack. I was out celebrating arrival day. Can anybody corroborate that? Engineer Farad and I were talking to Dr. Yaha when the power outage happened and the hour leading up to it. So you weren't in here all that day. As far as I know, nobody was supposed to be here. Thank you, Navigator Joseph. We're going to show them the painkillers. Found this box of painkillers under the table. Do you know whose it is? Let me see. It's not mine. And I don't remember anyone else taking painkillers around here. Well, has Simon ever been in here? The teacher? No, of course not. I see. Thank you. Navigator Orland, have you had any success regaining control over the systems? Not yet. Can I ask you some questions about the events that transpired here around the time of the power outage? Afraid not, Chief. Well, why? I believe we haven't formally met ever since you inherited your father's job. Didn't answer his question, won't answer yours. Um, why? I have my reasons, it's a long story. Do you know what the stakes are right now? I can't help but feel like you might be involved in this mess. If you want to clear your name, you better start answering my questions now. Oh. Tell you what, Chief, maybe we got off on the wrong foot here. You're not your old man, so maybe this is my chance that someone will finally look into this for me. What are you talking about? I was framed for a crime 20 years ago. I originally joined the mission as... Wait. I originally joined the mission as... Or should be as a farmer. After the verdict, I was barred from working another day in my job. I was forced to swap places with the navigator. I wasn't allowed to see my biological child anymore. 
Huh, they all failed me. The crew, security, William. That's why I won't help you. So you want me to reopen the case? Clear my name? Even if I wanted to, you haven't given me a lot to go by. I don't even know what you were charged with. Well, ask Sergeant Aldrich. He had a front row seat when it all went down. Well, there's no time. Time really is of the essence here, Navigator Orland. Maybe we can discuss all this after the situation has been resolved. I said what I said. This is my shot. I'm taking it. Lock me up again if you want. It won't get you anywhere. Hmm. And I'm walking on my own. Aldrich? Yes, Chief. Sergeant, I'm in the navigation room looking into the power outage. I just had a chat with Navigator Orland. He's not answering my questions. He said he'll talk to me if we reopen a case from... Is he serious? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Now? He wants us to reopen the case now? Well, it sounded like he's been waiting a long time, wanting this for a long time, but he sees an opportunity. Chief, this will take a while to look into. Maybe I'll find something, just send me the old file. If you wish, but in my professional opinion, we shouldn't spend too much time on this. I'll send you a message and attach the case records. So, you know what this is about? Well, there's only one case we could be talking about. Well, two, but they're connected. You'll see. One more thing, if you're really going to look into this, you need access to the farm. I'm granting it to you now. It's above the hospital in the bio area. You can reach it via the elevator. Thank you, Sergeant. Okay, so we got Orlin's, Orlin's conviction. This file says Farmer Orlin was found guilty of using an explosive to gain access to his ex-partner Zena's bunk in the residential area during a custody battle over their bi biological child, Lewis. The most damning piece of evidence was fertilizer used in the makeshift explosive only accessible to Farmer Orland and his colleague who had an alibi. My dad was chief at the time and Sergeant Aldrich was his right hand man. Orland was found guilty and transferred to the nav room where he no longer has access to dangerous chemicals. He was also put under a temporary restraining order against Zena and Lewis. Uh, Sergeant Aldrich sent me this record. The fertilizer was allegedly used in a makeshift explosive by Navigator Orland, who worked as a farmer at the time. Uh, they keep and breed animals, um, but we only have animals as pets. All the plants that they eat on the Zephyr are grown there. Navigator Joseph has claimed to have an alibi for the time of the hack. He claims he was in the residential area with the engineer Farad and Dr. Yaha when the hacker was in the navigation room okay so I think we need to go talk to Xena the farm floor in the bio area all right so we'll go to the farm floor first Simon has never been in the navigation room we need to go talk to Simon Who brought the painkillers in the navigation room? Okay, so... I think we need to go find Simon and we need to go to the farm room. So, what is this? Conference room. Activities room. Let's go to the school. New messages from Camille and Leona. Still, I think I saw Chi Chi outside the Art Institute. I couldn't go check because Kimmy was in my lap, but I think it was her. Did she get out? Uh, Chief, I'm in the public area, and I think I saw your pet here. Darren chased it off, but it can't be far. Okay, so we are near the art room. Chi Chi! Let's go into the Art Institute real quick. Is Kimmy okay? I think he broke his leg during the outage or at the very least sprained his ankle. That's why I was at the hospital to ask for painkillers. Thank you so much for siding with me. I understand it's selfish wish and there are people who might need the medicine more, but that's not just the way I see it. You understand that, right? Yes, I do. I hope he feels better soon. Thank you. I'll take him to the hospital as soon as, soon as things have settled down. Okay. Is 
Elevator Hall B. I don't see how Chi Chi could be all the way down here. Alright, we're gonna go back up. Common area. That is the housing unit. Okay, so it's got to be that way. Go this way real quick, see if I can find Chi Chi. Chi Chi! There you are, Chi Chi, stop! No, come here, Chi Chi. This one's on me, I definitely scared her away. I need to take a different approach. Chi Chi, please! Chi Chi, baby, come here! Chi Chi! We need to find L O A. Um, where is Lewis? Alright, well, where is Lewis at? L3B, um... L-O-C, L-O-B. Okay, so that should be her apartment, but she's not there. Was he not? Didn't I write that down? L3B. Um, Show her the fertilizer. Zeta, have a look at the record. Do you know what this is? I'm not sure. It's used in the farm area. Oh, it's the... Did Chief William show you this? How would my dad get his hands on it? 
I just thought because it's part of the case against my ex-husband, he used this to break into my bunk. So I've heard. Thank you. Zena, there's something I need to ask you about. I've learned about your involvement in a custody battle. Oh, did your father tell you about this? No. No, Zena. Maybe I can trick her. Anyways, your custody battle with... Navigator Orland, right? Navigator? No, he's a farmer. The custody battle happened a long time ago. It did? It feels like yesterday. It was about 20 years. Really? Why are you bringing it up now? You initially didn't get sole custody as you hoped, correct? Yes, but then Orlin tried to break into your bunk. Is that true? Uh, yes, that's true. Luckily, Lewis and, Lewis and I weren't inside at the time. He tried to get inside when you weren't there. Wasn't he trying to harm you or grab Lewis? It was a fluke. We were always home around that time except for that one night. Well, how come you weren't there? I don't remember. They caught Orlin very, very quickly afterwards, right? How did they know it was him? He was the number one suspect from the start because of a public falling out. But he mixed a concoction to open the bunk door that contained a fertilizer he stole from the farm. That was all the evidence they needed to prove him guilty. I see. Thank you, Zena. I hope you feel better soon. Alright, and we need to go to the farm area. That's a conference room. That's the hospital. Alright, let's fast track to the farm. need to go up to the farm. <gasps> Chi Chi! Okay, stay cool. Chi Chi! Huh? Chi Chi! No, don't run from me, Chi Chi! Fuck! Alright, that was probably creepy. See, there's Umberto. Alright, let's talk to Nava. Farmer Nava, are you holding up okay in here? So far, so good, Chief. The plants don't seem to be all that damaged. That's the most important thing. Good. Well, how come you're visiting the farm? Just checking on everyone? Hmm. I kind of feel like if I say it's for a case, they may not be so apt to talk to me. But if I say I'm checking on everybody, it um might win me some favor. I appreciate it. We're fine and so are the plants. Do you know what this is? Uh, of course. It's a fertilizer we use pretty frequently here. Is it possible a non-farmer got their hands on it somehow a long time ago? Well, we're not allowed to give them out. We keep a very strict inventory nowadays. Nowadays? My dad once told me that it wasn't always quite as strict, but the chemicals were always meant to be used by the farmers exclusively. Well, is it possible that he gave some of them away here and there? I can't say for sure, but Rose begged him all the time and he always turned her down as far as I know. Rose? Well, it makes sense. She's obsessed with her plants. In any case, if my dad ever snuck out chemicals, it certainly ended a year ago. Because that's when he died. Yes. Farmer Umberto, how are things going up here? Could be better, could be worse, Chief. Nava and I weren't hurt at all. We got lucky. One of our tanks was toppled over. It's too heavy to lift for the two of us, but backup is on the way. The plants are taking it surprisingly well so far. We don't anticipate a disruption in the supply chain. Took a while to mop up the water and soil, though. I hope we didn't clog the recycler. Now the chaos in this place is almost back to the original state. Well, that sounds good. I was worried about the food supplies. Farmer Umberto, are you familiar with this substance? Of course I am. Use it almost daily. 
Well, does any of it ever leave the farm floor? We're not allowed to take it away from here, Chief. Are there any measures in place to ensure this? Well, it's just a rule, but I promise we never break it. Not even once, maybe years ago? Not since I transferred here from the Navrum, to my knowledge at least. So he transferred from the nav room. Hmm. <laughs> From our virtual, I'm looking into this old case involving Navigator Orland. You talking about that really old one? The one that resulted in you trading places, yes. Well, that's a surprise. Why are you telling me? Well, do you believe he's guilty of the crime he was convicted of? Chief, I really don't want know why you believe I know the answer to this. I only know that he claims to be innocent to this day. Do you believe him? Well, he's at least never lied about anything else to me. Okay, so... Okay, so Umberto is standing up for Orland. Um, I think we need to go talk to Rose. Let's see if we can find Rose's bunk again. We're going to go look for her in the bunk. Okay, so we need to go there up to the second floor. Janitor Rose, are you home? It's Chief of Security Stella. Yes, dear, come right in. My door is always open. Got the red roses. Anything else shady in here? Janitor Rose, do you know what this is? Oh, yes, the object of my desires. I used to beg the farmers for a drop of this to help with my plants, but to no avail. So they never gave it to you? Do you think anyone else ever got their hands on it? Dear, I really don't know. Maybe they would have had a different response if I were crew. I bought a bonsai from Earth. I brought a bonsai from Earth, and I watched it slowly wither away over the first year of the mission. I'm sure the fertilizer would have helped, but the farmers wouldn't budge. Estella, dear, I don't know what to say to that. wonder our dad has bonsai. Um, Janitor Rose, have you ever seen this bonsai? It's beautiful. Is this a record from Earth? No, the bonsai is in my dad's bunk right now. Really? This is a recent picture? Yeah, I guess my dad was good at taking care of it. Stella, dear, he's a wizard. I cannot fathom how he maintained it so well for all these years. Did he have some extra help from the farmers? I'm not sure, but I do have a hard time keeping the tree healthy now that it's my responsibility. It's incredibly hard. I'd bought a bonsai from Earth myself, but it died within a year. Hmm. We need to go back up and ask the... Ask them for a... about the bonsai tree. Because it doesn't make sense. If she couldn't keep her bonsai healthy, how is it that my father could keep his healthy? That your old man's bonsai? I heard the rumors. Is that a recent record of it? Yeah. Well, I'll be damned. That's impossible. You should show it to Nava if you haven't already. Well, no, I haven't, but... Now that you said show it to her, that's what I'm going to do. Nava, look at my bush. 
Have you ever seen my dad's bonsai tree? No, that still exists. Yeah, take a look. I have a recent record of it. No way. How? How has it survived so long? Exactly. These were hard enough to grow back on Earth, from what I heard. I don't know. Maybe you have an idea of how my dad did it? Well, we have special chemicals up here that could make it possible, but without them, I don't see how. Well, do you think he could have had access to them? I think I already told you everything about that. If he got his hands on the fertilizer, maybe from my dad over a year ago? Oh, has Chi-Chi come home? Please, Chi-Chi, come home! Okay, so... Alright, we need to go find... Engineer Farad and Dr. Yaha. <laughs> All right, let's travel there. Chi Chi, what the hell is your problem? Chi Chi, come on. Let's see, are you in here, Doxy Yaha? Dr. Yaha, I have a quick question for you. What is it, Chi? Where were you at the exact moment the power outage occurred? Well, I was at the bar in the residential area. Who were you with? I was talking to Farad and Joseph. Why do you ask? Just trying to gather some facts about the incident. Thank you. Alright, so navigator Joseph is there. I think we're going to show the pills. I know you're having a very busy day, but I need to ask you a question. But well, what is it, Chief? The box of painkillers sa says it was prescribed to Teacher Simon. However, I found them in the nav room, which he isn't cleared to access. Maybe you have an idea how they ended up there? Chief, is that really important right now? Tell him to bring the painkillers here if he doesn't need them. We're quickly running out right now. Well, it is important. They might be evidence of a crime. We have a lot going on here, and I don't remember if I prescribed painkillers to Teacher Simon. Well, if someone did, it must have been you and your daughter, correct? Correct. Well, aren't there records? Well, we keep records over in the consultation room, but there's a lot to sift through if you don't know what you're looking for. I'll take a look. Thank you. Alright. Medical records could be useful to figure out how the painkillers ended up in the nav room. Gibberish to me, I should call Paul. Looks like the type of thing he can usually help me with. Yo, Paul. Hey, Stell, how you doing? Well, pretty fucking stressed is putting it mildly in you. Oh, you know the same. What can I do for you? Well, I'm looking into the origin of this box of painkillers I found. And I found medical records that seem to follow some sort of pattern. Here, I'll show you. Do you happen to know how it works? Hmm. That's a lot of pages. I can't really read it, but I can offer you something else. I'll transfer it to your computer here at the security office so we can search it for sp uh, specific entries. So if you have a concrete suspicion which code you're looking for, we can confirm whether or not ex it exists. Thank you, I'll take you up on that. First, I have to figure out what code I'm looking for. Well, I'm sure you're figuring it out, Stell. Thank you, Paul. See you soon at the office. Uh, let's see. Search the data together, security office, but you need to see a code. Alright, so we need to find a code for this. Um, it's 
go back and ask the doctor. So I copied the medical records from the consultation room because they relate to the case I'm working on, but I'm having a hard time deciphering them. Can you help me? Well, let me see. Right. The system scrambles them like this. When we input data or query something specific, it's in a human legible format. So you can't read it either. Can you at least tell me what it's stored in each of these entries? Well, that should be the prescribing doctor, the patient, and the medication. I see. Thank you. Okay, so we need to inspect these a little bit more. Chief, I don't know anything about that. I gotta get back to work. Can you tell me about the... Nope, she can't tell me about that. Alright, so we need to go to... We'll look in here for Chi Chi, because I don't know where that cat's gonna pop up next. She has nothing to say about the painkillers or the notes. Okay, um. So the painkillers do not say which doctor prescribed them. But what I think I'm going to do is let's go up to the security office. Oh, wait, I want to go to the nav. Earth Museum Navigator Room. We're going to go there first. I need the elevators. Orland, where you be? <laughs> Show him a bonsai tree. Nope. Him. Okay. Hey, Callie. Oh, I didn't even see the. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I was seeing, I was seeing like a bunch of the, um, every time I looked over, it was just like my automated messages. Sorry, Callie. This game I think that you would like. I really do. Um, it's detective. It's set in outer space. There's so many things to try to sink your teeth into. Conversations, cases. All of these are closed. I've solved them. We have four active ones. We have a setup. That we have to crack and get so we can get Orlin to talk. I'm on the search for painkillers um, and how they ended up in the nav room when a teacher was prescribed them. Then we have to find a, sorry, a secret 
secret server that's hidden on the map. And we're, gonna, we're coming back to talk to the security officer, guys. Tons of evidence. I'm also chasing my cat around. Okay. Uh, that's a captain's office. I need a security office. So I need to go down a floor. trying to find my cat somebody ended up sabotaging our system and the power went out and now they set a course for a totally different planet than the one we're supposed to be going to well you can fast travel but it doesn't necessarily put you right there some of the places it puts you in a general area of the the tram uh sergeant paul you said i could search the medical records on my computer yeah, I already copied them over when he sent them earlier. Like I said, you can only enter the specific string you're looking for. It'll tell you whether or not that string exists in the records. The interface is open on your screen already. You can use it any amount of times. Good work, thanks. Uh, which screen? Oh, good lord. I have no idea the code because it just says painkillers. A sticker on the back says they were prescribed to Simon. He's a teacher and he should not have been in the nav room. But it doesn't tell me anything else. And the doctors are not being very freaking helpful at all. So... There is no way of knowing. Okay, Aldrich can't help me with that. Paul can't help me with the fertilizer. Nobody can help me with this. I'm thinking my father was somehow involved in this because my bon his, my father's bonsai tree never died. And then all of a sudden it died. Um... Well, crap, I'm kind of stuck now. Uh... Okay, so we can rule Joseph out as part of the hacker. Because he was confirmed. Um... Which room is the secret server in? I have no clue. Only Dr. Yaha and Dr. Destina can prescribe medicine. Um. Each entry in the medical records contains the information on the medication, the patient, and the doctor who issued. Uh, but they won't tell me what the code is. I would think it would be one code for painkillers, right? I went and I talked to both of them. Maybe I need to try to find Simon. Let's see if I can try to find Simon. With him being a teacher and everything, it should be. Maybe he's at the school. We need to go up for the school. Please tell me Simon is in here. Nobody is in here. Uh, it does me no good. Maybe he's in the room. Ah, oh, Simon, hello. I was looking for you. Teacher Mariola, Teacher Simon, how are you holding up? Chief, we're still in shock, but physically okay. Well, we just finished going around the bunks to check on all the kids. Seems like they're all accounted for, thankfully. Most of them are actually in better spirits than I thought. Well, I guess they haven't depleted all their optimism yet. 
Well, I had to start, Chief. Sorry. It's been a day. We're going to show you those painkillers, Simon. Teacher Simon, I need to ask you something. Well, what is it, Chief? Do you ever take painkillers? Painkillers? Not in years. So, you don't know why your name is on this package? What? No, that must be a mistake. I haven't been to the hospital in forever. I'm assuming that's where these come from. Well, have you ever been to the Navarum? The... No, never. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. He says that they haven't been there, so I think we need to go back to the hospital and speak with the doctors. And find out what is going on. Find out if anybody has seen my Chi Chi. It's a long shot. I don't think. I don't think she can tell me what these are. Have nothing to say about it. Okay, so she's got nothing to say about it. It was. Like I said, it was a long shot. Hey, did you turn the lights on outside? No, but it sounds like a car. I don't know anything about it, so I've got to get back to work. Okay, so Destina is saying she doesn't know anything about it. Only one or two doctors. Only one or two doctors can prescribe this. Um, what happened? What, like a car accident? I'm assuming someone died because they had multiple ambulances. Oh, do they? Oh, you're sitting on my, you're sitting on my tubes. Hang on a second, I'll be right back.
All right, so um, <laughs> unforeseen circumstances, I need to run for a little bit. Um, Callie, what I'll do is I'll probably play some more of this in Discord in a little bit and go back over it from a little bit. You saw they do have a demo available. I will link the game again if you want to go check it out or maybe grab the demo yourself.